Hello everybody, I'm Andrew Casey at Hypersanity Books, and today I'm reviewing Bridget James's Diary. I'll be comparing a little bit between film and book, and I quite enjoyed this one. Between the book and film, I find that the third movie was actually my favourite, followed by the first movie, and the second movie was my least favourite. I also found with the books, the this book is my favourite, followed by the second, and then Bridget James's Baby as a book didn't live up to what I expected for expectation. However, let's just get into it. Number one, the diary and monologuing. With the diary, it is also written in second person perspective because of what you're reading with her goals. There is a lot more jotted with her goals on her weight loss journey and plans. They, that doesn't necessarily happen as much as she would like within the story. And the internal monologue adds a lot more humour into the story, getting into her mind. And there was something more enjoyable about the character through the journey. And I, I don't know, there was just something that I found was engaging more with the book than the film. But the film is very accurate to the book. I also found with the story, the way the chapters ended especially with the internal dialogue in written in the first person perspective it ended chapters well especially when she talked about everything that she doesn't want in a man which brings me to another point number 2 daniel cleaver what you want, baby, I got he comes across to her and you know as the reader that everything that she didn't want is everything that he is so as the central antagonist of the story, there is something that the character hasn't worked out, but you as the reader have worked it out because of what she doesn't want and what he actually is as a person. So when it came to different plots and subplots where he had the affair, yeah, it made her question things because she was against Mark Darcy thinking that he was the type of person who was adulterous, but it was actually the reverse of the story to what was said which he tried to clarify a couple times when he said, excuse me. Number three, meddling families. The story does start off with the meddling family, where his side of the family is trying to introduce him to her, and Bridget's side of the family tries to introduce her to him, and it doesn't take off. The only history that they had of knowing each other was when they were extremely small children. Within the story... Yes, Bridget is pushing into her 30s. It makes her seem like she's older in the movies compared to in the book. But again, I think there's different expectations on women where sometimes age is made into a bigger issue than it is with men. With the story, however, the meddling family has its little bit of interactions to create different subplots. The mother's affair against her husband was also confirmed within the book. There are other interactions of a few characters within the family dynamic that adds conflicts and it's breaking away from that to find the journey for herself but with Mark Darcy it doesn't start off well for some obvious reasons Mother, I do not need a blind date particularly not with some verbally incontinent spinster who smokes like a chimney, drinks like a fish and dresses like her mother Number 4, Friendships The friendships aren't touched on too much in the story and I think that's good because it's necessary to show Bridget's life, but it's not necessary to get too involved into her personal life, into that type of context. And I think the supporting characters that came within the story were just the right balance, not to be too involved, but enough to help with the story to put in a dynamic of the type of social life that she has with her friends. Number five, relationship expectations. The main thing is that she doesn't set high expectations on what she's wanting in a man. I know there are a lot of perfectionists out there to, that expect everyone else to change to suit their life, and there's no give and take. There has to be some sort of equal balance as two equal people. And within a sense, I think it was a realistic look at relationships within the story. I don't feel that it was she was still a flawed character, and some of her humour and witty attitude worked well. And the, the humour hit on a lot of spots with the character, and I, I will say again, I did enjoy the internal dialogue and written in the first person perspective, but again, I find with the relationships and expectations, 
even to what she had with her parents. Are they going to work it out? Are they going to get back together? It's not a high expectation. And as she did develop part of the story with Mark Darcy as a human rights barrister, there were certain points where she had to work in with him that helped the story flow through. But again, it was obvious on who's the antagonist and who's the supporting character. And love triangles I know don't normally like in stories, but in this story, despite having two sequels, I did enjoy it. Number six, Profession. The F.R. Leavis, who wrote Mass Civilization and Minority Culture. The, the F.R. Leavis, who died in 1978. There were so many points with her profession that made the story feel engaging. Where she worked in a publishing house. Yes, there was the Perpetua character. I think I said the name right. Where she is a sub-antagonist within the workplace. It also added lots of different references to certain books and other publications. So... There was an appreciation within the story, and there is some other humour along, but the other affair when she leaves the profession after the Daniel Cleaver situation where he was having an affair with someone else, yes, I do like that part of the story, and I think the way she was reclaiming her life with her profession to go a different path, she wasn't going to be under his rule until the next book. Oh, that is very good to know. But if staying here means working within 10 yards of you, frankly, I'd rather have a job wiping Saddam Hussein's ass. Number seven, fantastic dialogue. I think I can say with total confidence, absolutely not. Well, I'm sure he'd say the same about you, given your past behaviour. Sorry? It is written well in the story with the Mark Darcy character and Colin Firth, love a lot of his work, and I am looking at doing a video on him soon for writing tips because a lot of the dialogue in a lot of stories and movies that he's been in is fantastic. And more specifically at the moment, with Bridget Jones's diary, yes, I felt the Mark Darcy character had a lot of interesting dialogue. There was also the situation that touched on the ex-wife and the former partner and also clicking your fingers to get his attention. That type of thing is annoying. But again, I found there was a lot of engaging dialogue within the story and the internal dialogue that she had worked in with that quite well. There was a certain sort of, I don't know what to call it, like a intellectual dork romantic or whatever you want to say, but there is just something more with his character that I've always liked, and with Colin Firth, with the roles that he's done as well, always a fan. I, uh, I came to congratulate the new face of British current affairs. Number eight, The Fight. Yes, the fight happens within the book, but it's not as dramatic as it is with the film. Unfortunately, I think the film added a lot more humour, unforeseen circumstances, but the book was more authentic because the Mark Darcy character is a human rights barrister, and even though there's certain conflicts with the uh, Michael Cleaver character, he doesn't put himself in situations to assault someone but then again, the Michael Cleaver character does add a certain realisation within the story. But again, from ending a chapter one way to introducing his character as an antagonist with the story, I think it was good because as the reader, you know who you can't trust and what she doesn't want, and you know what she doesn't want is what he is. What you want, baby, got... Number nine. Ending chapters. Where are all the other tarts and vicars? Oh dear, didn't Jeffrey call you? Jeffrey, didn't you telephone Colin and Bridget? How's my little Bridget? I like this book because you end a chapter to then open into the next chapter on a high note. There is a punchline to the chapter. So the whole Auntie Shirley situation with the party, yes, you can write a story with some humour and different uh, points in there, and from that point you can end a chapter with a punchline, which then leads into the next chapter. And that's what makes the book a page-turner. And I think if you want to learn on writing books like this, definitely check out Bridget Jones's diary, because the way this author ends chapters is fantastic. Hmm. Looks like Auntie Shirley didn't get the message either. Number 10. Open-ended. The book doesn't end the same way with the film. It's left open to interpretation. 
the way she has her diary written, how Mark Darcy sees what is written, and then it's he's come to another conclusion. Within the book, you don't know what that conclusion is. With this movie, though, it determines that he bought another diary for her to restart afresh from where they were. And I think it was that type of twist with the story. Is he going to be by her side, or is there something that he read that made him think, right, and just cut his ties? Because he's a human rights barrister, and human rights barristers do not have time for nonsense in their life, in in that type of high-profile profession. And again, I loved the way the book was written. I loved how it was formed. And on a final note, I have had a thought about writing a comedy romantic book. Now picture this, Bridget Jones's diary, not with the Daniel Cleaver character as an antagonist, but... Here she is, my little Bridget. <laughs> my Uncle Jeffrey. <laughs> Hear me out and just listen to this. Had a drink? No. No? Come on then. Actually, not my uncle. Someone who insists I call him uncle while he gropes my ass. Again, maybe an idea for a comedy romantic. Maybe something that's a little bit too obvious for a book. Asks me the question dreaded by all singletons. So, how's your love life? But just an idea to play with, and sometimes you might find some inspiration from the books that you read and work on some other writing material. But otherwise, that's it for today. Hit like, subscribe, comment. I'll be doing more videos on the Bridget Jones Diaries uh, books and touching a base with the movies. I will also be doing a video about Colin Firth with his dialogue, because I think there are some interesting writing tips to learn from his dialogue. But that is another story. That shall be told another time. Don't wanna be all by myself. Bop, bop. <laughs>